Uh, we're on for our final segment. This is IGTV, uh, a production of New York City InfraGuard. We have with us today uh, Gary Kessler from Gary Kessler Associates. Uh, good morning, Gary. And, uh, well, here we are uh, down at the final end of the track here. Uh, we're going to get into one more area, uh, detecting steganography. All right. And um, let's, let's go to uh, the first of two items uh, I want you to hit on, stego application detection. Well, stego application detection... Basically, um, what, what that's doing is it's looking in, in, a, in a forensic um, sense um, or an investigative sense. Um, I, I get a suspect's computer, and one of the things I might want to know is, is there, are there applications on this computer that might have been performing Stego? So um, the Stego application detection phase is when we're even trying to find out if there's any software on the computer that might have, um, that, that might have been able to hide stuff inside of other stuff. One of the things that makes this difficult, by the way, is that there are some Stego software that in a Windows environment, for example, is never installed, by which I mean it never hits the registry. There's no entry in the registry with, you know, the initialization parameters, no entries made somewhere in, you know, my local machine or that kind of stuff. So um, some software, for example, uh, one of my favorites is a tool called S-Tools. Um, S tools will hide uh, information inside of GIF files or bitmaps or WAV files, and it's a very very small program. I can fit it on just about the smallest thumb drive I own, and I could go say to an internet cafe, throw in the thumb drive, run S tools, um, hide something inside of an image file, mail it out to somebody, unplug uh, the thumb drive. So the registry may show that S-Tools was a recently run program, but by the way, if I change the name of the program, even that doesn't show up. And, and even if it did, it would mean that an examiner would have to get to that machine in the Internet Cafe pretty quickly to see that it was one of the last 10 or 20 programs that were run. So um, the, the, the STEG algorithm or application detection, um, it's, it's important, but it happens to be pretty hard to do. Um, in, in many cases, um, or at least there's a lot of ways that a bad guy could get around it. Yeah, and it seems as though uh, the investigators would have to almost literally be sitting on you. Well, they, they need to know to be looking. Right, right. So a current investigation may be good. Um, flying in, they may be blind. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, the next topic is uh, Stego Carrier File, file Detection. Well, Stego Carrier File Detection now is sort of the, the other side of the same coin, where in this case what I'm trying to do is I'm looking at potential carriers on the computer. So I'm looking at image files, for example. They're a very, very common carrier of um, hidden data. And so what there I might do is apply some statistical methods to the, um, to the, the image files to try to see if there's reason for me to believe that Stego may have been employed. So, for example... We had spoken earlier about color palette modification. So in a GIF file, I've got the possibility of 256 colors. Well, suppose I look at a GIF file and I find that there are 15 duplicate colors, by which I mean there are two entries in the palette that point to the same color. Well, there's no self-respecting image program is going to waste palette space that way. That's indicative that somebody has manipulated this GIF file somehow. Um, and depending upon how the palette was modified and how the colors within the palette have been um, reordered and resequenced actually leaves um, a signature of what type of steganography program may have been used. Um, in a JPEG file, if I'm changing the coefficients um, of the way in which the images are being encoded, well, again, the way in which the coefficients are being manipulated leaves a signature for what type of algorithm was used for the Stego and, therefore, what type of program may have been used. And all of this then helps us try to determine if we can recover the file. Well, Gary, I, I've got to be honest with you. This, this, it sounds like um, Elsevier has hooked you and others into writing one hell of a book. Uh, this looks like it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, for those of us that are that are more technical oriented, um, 
I'd say your chapter looks like it. It, it would really be enlightening, um, something that people could really okay. take really take advantage of and uh, really do some deep reading and studying on. Uh, you know, the line of books that Elsevier puts out, uh, generally speaking, are, are very, very good. Uh, we've liked them over, over time. Um, this particular book will be coming out in the spring of 2011, and, and we invite uh, all of our InfraGuard listeners uh, and those of us who are picking us, picking us up on the blog as well uh, to take a look at selected topics in computer science uh, that will be uh, published by Elsevier in the spring of 2011. And uh, Gary, will you talking to your co-author, tell him not to be bashful. Um, tell him to come on on the program, and we'll kind of go over this in the same regard. And uh, we'll get more uh, more information out there, trying to help everybody. Uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a right field, and there's a lot of things breaking in it. Excellent. All right. Have a great day. I see a snowy background up there in Vermont. Yes, yes, that's true. It is Vermont. It is winter. <laughs> All right. Take care, Gary. Good talking Thanks, to you. Joe.